Hi everyone, it's me, Darlene. I am back with quilt block of the month number four. We are doing the block for April. April showers, right? So I went with a little tiny umbrella for our specialty block in this quilt block. And uh, first, if you don't know what this series is all about, I'm doing a quilt block the first of every month for the entire year. And we are quilting as we go, hand quilting, big stitch quilting, if you want. You can do any kind of quilting that you want, or you can just make the block and do whatever you want with it. And, um, and then I'm also ragging the quilt, and we're doing that, ragging, sewing, ragging as we go, meaning snipping as we go. So at the end, it's going to be all done, except for the border, and we'll get to that when that comes. So I have a playlist link in the description and also on the end screen of this video. I did something different, and it's, you know, it's dumb that I wasn't doing it before. This time, I just designed my little specialty block, and I made it, and I kept, in, you know, the instructions as to what I did. And then I built the rest around it. Before, what I was doing is I would just make a space, you know, I'd say, oh, I'll do 9 by 10 or whatever. And then I tried to make my specialty thing fit into that block, and that's just dumb. So this has already been pre-recorded, and you'll be seeing it in a minute. And I uh, really like that I did it that way because it's easy to just fill in all the spaces, you know, around the block. Oh, yes, I do want to mention before I start giving you the sizes. Wait a sec. I hope that I can always remind you that this block right here is going to be number four block. So it's going to go under... Oops, wrong way. It's going to go under our first block. I just messed it up. So you want to, let me move this down. I'm not equipped to show you things the way I want. I think you might be able to see. This block, <laughs> I'm having trouble, is going to be, this new block is going to be touching our number one block, the kitty block. So if you're trying to not get things to match, you need to pay attention. I had this dark pink, green, and purple, so my top row on this block has none of that. The next block we're going to have to match um, so that the block doesn't have anything on the top here, matchy-matchy, and also nothing on the side that will be butt up against this one. I know, I can't really show you, but... We'll worry about that when we get to that. So try not to match anything here to the block that goes right above it. So here are the sizes. I don't know if there's a specific way you're supposed to put alphabets or numbers if they were numbered. Um, I don't. I just do what I feel like doing. Okay. A, right here. Two and a half wide by six tall. That's what you're cutting. You don't have to add for seam allowances. I'm giving you the size that you are going to cut. Two and a half wide, six tall. B, six wide, three and a half tall. C, four wide, five tall. D, three and a half inches square. E, three and a half wide by two inches tall. F, two and a half inches wide, four and a half inches tall. Our specialty block is going to be six inches wide by seven inches tall. You do not have to make this. If you want to omit that step, you're just going to cut a piece of fabric six wide by seven tall. Or you could put a half square triangle in there or whatever, whatever you want to do. Or uh, fussy cut something if you want a specialty that way and you could still put a border. But that's the finished size including the border, six wide, seven tall. If you do make this guy, I always tell you we have room in the border 
to you know um, adjust the size so if yours came out really big you're still going to just trim it and your border will just be more narrow if it's too small you're going to add more border or if you're worried about it being too small instead of using two inch strips you could use two and a half inch strips I have one the heart remember the heart um, where I had to add some border and I just added it to the border I already had so six by seven H four inches wide by two inches tall I is a two inch square you know I like to throw at least one of those in and I made it purple like the umbrella but a different print I don't have any two prints alike in any individual block J is two inches wide by five and a half inches tall K five and a half inches wide by four inches tall L six and a half inches wide by two inches tall M six and a half inches wide by three and a half inches tall N is six inches wide by five inches tall and O is three inches wide by five inches tall now I'm going to go edit so I can make sure I said everything correctly I'll be right back I said everything the right way that doesn't mean that I wrote it down the right way <laughs> so there's still room for mistakes always watch the entire video before you start cutting anything because if I make a mistake and I find out the mistake you know only while I'm putting this together uh, I will let you know so we're going to um, let you go watch the portion of the video that I pre-recorded to make this little umbrella and again you don't have to make it you can just put a what did I say whatever I said <laughs> I don't want to make a mistake you can always just cut a piece of fabric and put it there watch that right now then at the end we'll put all of this together for our umbrella block you need one piece this is for the top of the umbrella four and a half inches wide by two and a half inches tall for the handle you need a piece about three quarters of an inch wide by at least three inches tall I would say do three and a half or even four inches we're going to be trimming it after the fact and I like to start with a bigger piece of fabric so it's easier to sew but when we're done the umbrella handle is going to be narrow for the background these pieces all have to be the same fabric you need four squares two and a half inches squared you need one strip this is a one inch strip and it needs to be I would say at least four and a half five inches go five inches this way five inches wide that'll be enough again we are going to add it and then we'll trim so here's how we're going to start am I gonna take you to the machine yes I think I will I'll meet you at the machine this is such a basic umbrella that it's almost embarrassing <laughs> there's some beautiful umbrella quilt blocks out there but they either use applique or uh, sewing curves. I didn't feel like doing either of those things and I saw some that you you build the umbrella in a corner. It was really cool but again I just wanted something simple so I came up with this. You are going to take your umbrella piece and I'm showing it to you like the way I would be looking at it in the block and you're going to take one of the background two and a half inch squares and you're going to uh, just put it on one of the sides I guess I'll just start on that one now the umbrella is going to be pointed so I want my line to go this way and I didn't even draw a line I'm pretty okay with just sewing that distance you can draw a line on the diagonal you can also just fold and press if you want to so I'm going to sew this way and I like to start here as opposed to on the corner so I'm just going to go put this part under my needle and we're going to sew this way
Now I am going to cut this corner off. And I'm going to go press this open. I'm using tone on tone for the background for this one. Okay, so I want you to look at it. See, it's got one ear. Now I'm going to put this down here. I don't want to go this way because that wouldn't look right. <laughs> so my line is going this way up and now we have to go down. So I'll be sewing in. I'm going to still start at the corner. If you're wondering where do you start because it overlaps and that's on purpose, you're still going to start or stop at this corner of that piece. So you're still doing on the diagonal corner of this piece to the corner of this piece. And I'm going to start here and go down. Am I? No, I don't feel like sewing in that direction. I'm going to start here even though I don't like to jump on the corner. That wasn't bad at all. And again, I'm going to trim up here. And I will go press this open. This is what I have for the top of the umbrella. See how basic? <laughs> okay, now we're going to take the other two and a half inch squares for background. Mine is very hard to see if I'm on the right side or not. That's the right side. Okay. And we're going to take the little um, piece that you have for the handle. Again, mine is three quarters of an inch by. I think I said three or at least three, three and a half. You just want it to be a little bit longer than your square. And then we can trim after. And I really like mine. It's a gray mottled kind of print. And I'm just going to go here on one end, on one side. Doesn't matter which side unless you have a, um, a print that has a direction. Try to have your backgrounds have no direction. Just a small all over print is great. And I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch. I don't want a, you know, narrower than that. So a quarter of an inch. But it still doesn't have to be perfect. And mine wasn't perfect. I kind of like was wobbly. I am going to go press this open. We want this one to be nice and flat so we can get right up close to it. Now here's what I'm going to do. I have my other piece and I'm making sure that I have my right sides together. Now if I wanted I could line up the blocks here and then just come in and sew at the very edge here. But that's cutting it too close to the edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm laying my other block right on top of this, but I'm going to pull it this way toward this uh, handle. About maybe, I, that doesn't even really look like a quarter of an inch, but can you see, see what I've done? I just pulled it away from here a little bit. I moved it up. Don't line this piece to this strip. No, that strip could have been this wide. We don't care. We're lining up the two blocks. So just lay the top one on here and then pull it up a little bit, maybe a quarter of an inch. Now, you can feel, and if you have a light fabric like me, you might want to go a little light. You can see where this one is under there. I want to get as close to this guy, um, but not like, you know, so close that I accidentally sew over it. So I'm going to just come in and, you know, maybe do about a quarter of an inch from the edge of this block. Ignore the, the strip of the handle. Ignore that. You're measuring and judging by the two squares. And I ran out of thread. All right, I'm starting again with white thread this time. <laughs> I'm leaving that green thread right there that's already started. And again, my squares are nice and lined up, and I have about a quarter of an inch space. This one has been pulled over this way a little bit, and I'm sewing a quarter of an inch seam allowance using the top square as my guide. Okay, mine is a little bit wider than I would like. 
and that's okay. I can fix that. I mean, that's okay. I mean, it would still look cool, right, with the umbrella there. But I'm going to show you, if yours is a little bit too wide and you would like it a little bit more narrow, we can do that. But notice now, this piece has more taken off because of the way we put this together than this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew again on this side to make that little strip more narrow. You don't have to do that. That's just for the people who would like to know how to get something very narrow between two pieces of fabric. So I'm going to, you know, flip this back. And there's the line that I sewed on. I'm going to just sew again. I'm going to go just to the inside of that line. Conveniently, I had dark thread. So see what I mean? I'm going to just go on this side of that line. Now, I did that with the white thread, which you can't see, but yes, you can. See, I went in. Now my, my handle is going to be very narrow. Look, let me go press. Now it happened that this end came out a little bit more narrow. So I'm going to make that the bottom. No, the top. I'm going to put that. Oh, and that'll even get covered up. All right. So see how that's going to all work out. So now I can trim this. Like I said, I like to trim after the fact. And remember, if this doesn't come out the same exact size as mine, that's okay because what I'm doing is giving us plenty of room in the border to trim so that we all come out with the same size at the end. And let's trim this guy. And now I'm going to add my umbrella top to this. I'm going to just fold and make a little... Um, crease in the center. Does that look like it's in the center? It does. And I'm just going to put that here. Oh, that worked out really good. Oh, it's a little shorter on that side. Doesn't matter. Does not matter. I am going to sew right there. And it's not going to be even. Oh, I like it. I like it. That's cute. It, to me, it looks more like a beach umbrella than a rain umbrella, but that's all right. Because we're aiming for rain, April, April showers. Get it? Get it? Now, I just thought I would like more of some background on top of the umbrella, just to give it some space, like it's in the sky. So I'm going to add this one-inch strip, and it's as wide as you need to cover the top of this. And I always like to cut generous. Okay, here I go. And if we lose the tip of the umbrella, I kind of would like that. I think it would look more umbrella-y. <laughs> but I don't think I'm going to lose my tip. Yeah, my tip is there, but that's all right. I just have a pointy umbrella. You know, if you wanted to do like one little stitch with black thread to give a little, you know, that little tip of the umbrella, you could do that. You could do anything you want. I'm going to press this, and then I will trim it, and I'll tell you what size it came out to be. Mine turned out to be, it's a little smaller than 4 by 5. 4 wide, a little smaller. 5 tall, a little smaller. So, again, doesn't matter, uh, because we're going to add 2-inch strips uh, on sides, top, and bottom. And I'm using black. So I'm going to add one to each side, and then I will trim, and then I will let you know what size block we're going to end up with. And if you don't want to make the umbrella block, you will just cut something that size. And I don't cut my strips. I just take my long strip, and I just add it, and then I trim as I need. So you just take your scissors and you kind of like hold them upside down and just trim. There's another way to trim them too, but for me it doesn't always come out straight. I'll, I'll show you when I do the next pass. I'm going to go press this open. I have this, and I will go ahead and just trim that off with my uh, rotary cutter.
I'm just going to line up my ruler to the top and bottom of this and get rid of those ends. Okay, now I'm going to go, let's see, I don't want to be on that hard crease. I can get the crease out, but I just don't feel like it. I'm going to do the top and bottom. Oh yeah, so another way you can trim is you fold it back and you know and then some they fold it back and then they cut just right to where it's going to meet at that end and I don't like that because I always end up screwing it up so I just cut like you just saw me cut and then I'll trim it after going to press open and trim and then I'll tell you the size we end up with. I trimmed mine to six wide by seven tall. You should be able to get it too. And uh, that's it. I, I like my block. So now let's go put it in with the rest of the pieces. So again, six by seven. Now we are ready to put this together. You can put it together any way you want as long as the puzzle fits. We have a group here that will all go together. These two go together, these three go together, this goes with this, and then this, and then this, and then of course you can join that, and this. Let's start over here. I'm going to take A and F, and I'll sew those together. Now I'm going to attach B to the umbrella block. Now this fits perfectly next to this. So that's good, and I'm going to go and sew right there. Let's do this corner. I'm going to sew D and E together, and then I will attach C. Now let's build this block. I'm going to attach H and I, and then I'll attach K to that. Now we're going to put J right here. At this point, we can join these two, and then we'll attach it to this block. This is coming out so nice. All right, I'm joining these two together and these two together. All I have left to do is put these two pieces together and then I will attach it to the top. And this is what I have and I like it. And I really don't get fussy as to like what colors, I mean a little bit. You know, I didn't want too much purple. I wanted that to pop, but then I thought a little bit of purple here. I try to put something with florals, uh, but some of my pieces, my scraps, I'll be like, oh, I bet that'll fit, and it might need just a little bit of trimming. So I'm like, okay, I will use that. And I do try to repeat some prints um, in my other blocks. So I'm going to take a couple of pictures of this and have a little tiny slideshow. I will come back and show you when I finish. I'm not going to show you how I do the, um, what's it called, the big stitch quilting because you can see that in the first block, part two. I did that and I will be joining, no, I won't be joining this to anything yet. We have to wait for the next block because we're just going to make two whole rows and then we'll put those rows together and we'll have six pieces sewn together. That's after we make June's block. It's making the year go by kind of fast. I don't know if I like that. All right, you guys, that is it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe so you can see the rest of the year. And if you haven't started yet, you have plenty of time. Go check out the playlist in the description and or on the end screen and uh, you'll get caught up. Bye.